Okay, so Nabara. I only recall hearing about it relatively recently, but when did you actually start the project? That actually, I started that back in uh, around the time Fedora 35 released, okay. which is maybe two years ago. Okay, maybe? so okay. then my, my timeline is about right then. I thought maybe it'd been around for longer and I just didn't know about it. No, no, no. It was, um, I think it was um, either shortly before or shortly after, uh, I think, Garuda. Oh, if I'm uh, yeah, just, okay. just I didn't realize that was that young. Okay, I thought that would had been around for longer. Big, yeah, Garud is a little bit older than than Nobara, just just oh. a hair, I, I believe. Okay, that's news to me. Okay, so but it didn't really start getting pop. Like, Nobara didn't start really getting yeah. popular until around like thirty six. Okay, okay, well, end of thirty six, beginning of thirty seven. Okay, so why why did Navarro why why did you make Navarro like what? What was it about Fedora that wasn't, you know, wasn't up to the the level you needed to be for your use case? Well, a couple of things. One was I needed something that both myself and my dad could use. Okay. My dad, uh, I got him started using Linux. I switched him over. Uh, this happened uh, one day after he had a Windows blue screen that, made all of his usb devices stop working and i spent an entire weekend over there trying to fix it did you fix it and oh yeah we got it we got it fixed and then after that i switched him to linux and we started with arch and then we moved him to fedora once i got (laughs) you you started him with arch well it was at that time it was not arch it was what was the name of it? It doesn't exist anymore. It was the is basically Arch with an installer before Endeavor existed. Oh, um, yeah, okay, okay, yeah. But anyway, we started with that, and obviously, you know, the problem with Arch is every once in a while you'll get something funky that happens, and yeah. it, and then it too will kind of screw up the system. And the, yeah, the okay. fact of the matter is, I don't live in the same state with them anymore, so I can't drive over for a weekend and fix the stuff like I used to. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's another reason that we had to move over to Fedora. Mm-hmm. Uh, the problem that I had, the problems that I had with Fedora were basically just gaming, gaming stuff here and there, like Mesa not being up to date or, uh, needing an updated version of game scope or needing, um, patches for rad V in Mesa or, mm-hmm. um, just various little things here and there, which is also why there's now now like a massive list of the changes that Nobara puts in because mm-hmm. all that stuff added up over time. And at first, you yeah, a lot of people they they may argue, oh well, Nobara is just Fedora with a couple of patches thrown in or a couple of things here and there. Like you don't understand, there's like a massive list of changes that we've done. Mm-hmm. And when you add all of those things up. And you take your basic Fedora installation, you keep you go and implement those one by one by one by one. Like that shit adds up over time. Yeah. You don't want to spend a day or two days getting your Fedora system back to what it was. Mm-hmm. And you know, if you just have one or two minor changes that you do on Fedora, that's fine. Just go ahead and do, do Fedora. But for me, that's not what happened. And for me to have my daily driver like that and have multiple systems that I need to do that on, that's where it stemmed from. And I was just like, okay, let's just go ahead and do this, get it done, get something that I can easily pop in on any system or that my dad can use and I can remote in. I know where to look for changes, where to look for things that I need to fix or resolve or things that might be outdated Mm -hmm. and boom, immediately be able to resolve them. That's where it stemmed from. Mm -hmm. And I was just like, once I started using it myself and got comfortable with it, I was like, you know, there's some other people that I know of that would probably be uh, probably like this. So I put it out there as I, like, you know, I it's still to this day, the bottom line is I make it for myself and my dad. Right. You may love it. You may hate it. You might have problems with it. I can't please any, I, I can't please everyone. I don't care to please everyone. If you have a problem with it, that's your problem. I, if you come in my discord and you ask me, then sure. Mm-hmm. If you're very, if you're polite about it, I'm going to be polite back and I'm going to try and help you. Mm-hmm. Like, that's that's generally my take, but I've had, I'm sure a lot of communities have had the specific people that come in that either seem more act entitled or 
uh, demand things or they just come in and they're immediately like, oh, this distro shit. And I'm like, oh, well, you're shit. Goodbye. <laughs> like, I'll dish it. You want to dish it? I'll dish it right back. Like, it, 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 there's two sides to everything. And I, that's just the way I am. Right. You know, I'm not, I'm not going to sugarcoat it and be, be, I can't be nice all the time. I'd go insane. 